Hey, it's Derek from CG Shortcuts, and today we're going to do this. We're going to create a moving slice loop with the Volume Builder in Cinema 4D. This video was brought to you by CGShortcuts.com, the ultimate online resource for learning CG and motion graphics, where you can find all of our tutorials, in-depth courses, resources, and loads of downloadable project files and CG assets. You can now also become a CG insider and get unlimited access to exclusive members only content. Plus you'll be supporting the channel and allowing us to keep making tutorials just like this one. So head over to cgshortcuts.com and start learning today. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, let's get started. First, we're gonna go over to the content browser and we're gonna type in mail bust. We're gonna grab this mail bust and bring it in. And the cool thing about what we're going to learn today is that you actually don't have to use this model. You can use your own models. Now I'm just going to use this model so you can see the reference to so the numbers I'm typing in and stuff are going to make sense. But I'm going to show you how to create it so that you actually can use whatever model you want and get the same effect and apply it to different models. It's a really cool, really simple effect. So first thing we're going to want to do is go to our mail bus, go to coordinates, and we're just going to up the scale of this to five. There's multiple ways you could do that. You could type in five here or a little quick tip in case you didn't know that you could actually type in math inside of these coordinate things. Just a little tip, say for the size down here, you want to say times five. You can literally say times five, times five, times five and hit enter. And that's the, the same thing. So now you've got that. We're going to go ahead and go to display and turn on our lines. And the one thing we're going to need is to make sure that we have more topology because we're going to use the volume builder and the volume builder doesn't work well unless the geometry you throw into it already has the topology it needs for the volume builder. So you want to build your models to have a good amount of polygons before you put them in the volume builder instead of trying to smooth it out afterwards. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're just going to hold alt and put a subdivision surface on this. So now we have this nice, clean, smooth face. Go ahead and minimize that. Next thing we want to do is create a cube. We're going to set the size of this cube to 20 in the Z. So we have this slice here. Go ahead and bring that up so it encompasses the entirety of your object. If you need to scale it uh, taller, you can. Just make sure it's covering all the way from the top to the bottom of your object you want to create a slice out of. So what we're going to do is going to create a cloner. While we have our cube selected, we're just going to hold Alt and click this cloner. And that's going to automatically put that cube inside that cloner for us. So what we need to do is change our cloner array count from three and the X down to just one. And in the Z, we want to change this to 10. So we set our cube Z to 20 so that we can do the math a little simpler. Then we want to set our size of our Z to 60. So now that we have the size to 60, I'll explain here in a second what we're creating and why I'm using these values. But just follow along here for a second and I'll explain and it will make sense. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our cloner and we're going to keyframe it at zero and we're going to go to frame 90 and we're going to move it. So we're going to go to the coordinates and we're going to move it 180. And the reason we're doing 180 is because it's a clean multiple of the 60, the signs that we set. So that means the where these slices interact with this head at frame zero are going to be the same in frame 90. So we'll be able to create that loop. So we're going to keyframe that and then for any good loop to actually work, you're going to need to go one frame further and then grab that and slide it past it and then go back. So in our little timeline here, we're just going to set it to 91, slide it over and then go back to 90. So now it looks it looks like this right now and you'll see it has that weird natural uh, curve to it. So we don't want that. So we're going to need to fix that. Go to window F curve in the timeline. This is our cloner object here. You can see we have our motion is selected here. We're going to set that to linear and that way it's the exact same speed at the beginning coming out of the animation and going into the end of the animation. So that means when we loop this, it's going to be the exact same speed values from the beginning to the end. So if you stare at just the middle here, you can see you can't tell where it starts and where it ends. So that's good. That's what we want. So now what we need to do is copy this cloner two more times. Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V. And what we're going to need to do is go to our cloner, go to the transform tab and offset it by 20. And you can see now it's moved that cloner exactly the size of our cube over. And we're going to do the same thing to this cloner. We're going to go to 40. 
So now we see we've got a created this solid shape out of these three layers and that's why we scaled everything the way we did is so now that when we offset these corners that they fit nicely in there so what we're going to do next to create kind of this cool gap in our volume builder when we create this is go into all of our cubes and just change the size to 15 in the z so now we have this slice effect where we have all these little pieces together so the reason we've created three separate cloners instead of just one cloner spaced out this way is because each of these cloners is going to be put into its own individual volume builder. And each of those volume builders are going to be turned into a volume mesher. And then that volume mesher is going to be baked out as an Olympic. So we'll end up with three separate Olympics. That we'll be able to add modifiers to like displacement and stuff like that. Or you'll be able to add your own materials to and you can adjust them individually. So it gives you a little more customization and control by separating them out rather than just making it one cloner. So now that we've created our cloner loops, we're going to go ahead and click the volume builder. We're gonna grab our first cloner and pull that into the volume builder. So now we've got kind of a lot going on in our scene. So I just wanna hide these other two cloners so that we can see what's going on. So I'm gonna hold the shift, control and alt, and I'm just gonna mouse and click and drag it down over these other two cloners, whoop, right there. And that's gonna go ahead and hide those. So you can see that our cubes look a little odd. They look a little blocky. And that's because our voxel size is very large. Now a voxel is a volumetric pixel. It's basically a 3D pixel. So what we need to do is just change the resolution of that and change the size of that down to one centimeter. So then what we need to do is grab our subdivision surface of our male bust, pull that into the volume builder. And inside our volume builder, we're gonna swap these. We're gonna make sure the subdivision surface is below the cloner. And then we're gonna change the mode of our cloner to intersect. And now you can see we've created a nice slice of our object here. And if we hit play, it's going to calculate slowly right now. But you'll see because we automatically animated that cloner and stuff, we're getting this nice kind of weird scan effect here. You can already sort of get the picture of what's going to happen when we have the three of them lined up. So let's go ahead and turn all these back on. So now that we've got one third of it done. We just need to repeat that process two more times. So we're going to go ahead and just copy paste, copy paste. And we're going to just grab our cloner bring it into the volume builder, delete the old cloner, grab this cloner, bring it into that volume builder, delete the old cloner. Inside the volume builders, make sure that the cloner is at the top and it has intersect as the mode. Same with this one, cloner at the top, intersect as the mode. So now you see we have our model here with these nice little slices. And if you hit play, you notice it's playing back really slow and that's because our voxel size is really small. The smaller the voxel size, the slower it's gonna play back. So you can see that it still looks kind of voxely and kind of rough around the edges. So you'd think your instinct would be to add the smooth effect. Now we actually don't need to do that right now. What we actually need to do is just put this into the volume mesher. When we add this to the volume mesher, you'll see that it actually cleans that up really nice and it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and do that for each one of these volume builders. So inside the volume mesher, we have a couple options and that's voxel range threshold. The higher the threshold, the more it's gonna like puff out kind of blow up the edges of your voxels and the smaller you get, the smaller it's gonna shrink that in. Now you can make some pretty cool effects with this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep it at 50% right now. And the adaptive threshold is basically the same as optimizing. We turn on our lines here and the more adaptive we get, you see the more optimized it gets and the more, the less polygons it takes up. We're gonna leave both of those zero. I just wanna show what those did real quick. Okay, so now if you hit play on this, we'll see that it's gonna move these slices through. And if you wanna get a good example of what this is gonna look like, go ahead and just create you know, three materials real quick, change the colors of them so you can see which one's which. And toss those on each one of these. And so now you can see the effect we've created. It's this nice moving slice reveal. Now you notice the playback is horrible. So that's no fun. It's because it's having to calculate the volume measure every time, every frame. So in order to speed that up, once you get it here, where you liken the way that it looks, all you're gonna wanna do is select all of these, right click, choose Bake Olympic. Don't do Bake Olympic and delete unless you're absolutely sure that you're not gonna need to tweak anything. I always do Bake Olympic. And then if there's nothing wrong, we'll hide those afterwards. So let's go ahead and let this bake. That can take a little bit of time, but once it's done, it's totally worth it. Okay, now we've got those Olympics baked and brought in. Let's go ahead and just drag those down so they're organized. Again, we'll select both of these, 
shift control alt and just gonna bloop and that's gonna turn those off so all we're left with now is the volume measure olympics and if we notice it plays back perfectly smooth so all that did is create an olympic animation baked volume animation so now we have this and the viewport is going to play back really nicely and you have this really trippy cool wave effect is that now you can actually play with and you can do fun things like add displacers to these if you wanted to do a noise on that really quick and that way we have this cool effect where one of them is wobbly or something like that so there's a lot of things you can do with this you can highlight all these put them in a group and then put them in a cloner if you want and now set that to render instances and you know now you have a smooth cloner where you could do like you know make a weird i don't know nft there you go <laughs> right so pretty cool that you can do that stuff and it's not breaking your machine trying to calculate volumes for all this so a pretty cool way to use the volume measure cloners and then the olympic bakes to really get a really cool uh fast preview so go ahead and add some lights and materials to your scene and render that out hope you enjoyed that's it for this tutorial as usual you can download the project files below to save a bit of time or head over to our website where you can download all of our project files and loads of other cg assets and resources big thanks to this month's patrons and cg insiders you guys are the best and there's no way we could make all of these tutorials without your support thank you so much okay that's it for now i'll catch you next time Thanks for watching! Let me know what you want to see in the comment section down below, or you can leave a like or dislike, and don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. There's loads of extra resources on our website, and you can win epic CG prizes in our monthly challenges. Check out cgshortcuts.com for more details. Catch you next time!